Casey with Mid Kansas Marine here with Brian Andreka, Kansas Angling Experience. We are gonna go through Brian's brand new Lund 1875 Pro V. Uh, Brian was able to pick it up a couple weeks ago, so he's got a little bit of time on the boat now. We wanted to do a feature of this bad boy. It's a fishing machine, and obviously Brian is the right guy to have it. Okay, we're out here on the water, got her launched. Let's go, go over uh, the equipment that you are running, engine kicker, uh, your electronics, trolling motor electronics up front. Um, kind of just give us a walkthrough on what you have. Kind of explain to me, if you could, a little bit about why you run it, why you choose this equipment, and how, with the features that you like uh, for your job, for your business. For sure, yeah. Well, as a full-time fishing guide, I mean, fishability is number one, and comfortability is number two, and this is kind of the good middle ground. Um, I mean, I've, I was a tiller guy back in the day, but unfortunately, I mean, in a tiller, Unless it's a big glass tiller, everybody gets wet. And it's not always the most comfortable ride, but it is the most open fishing platform. So with a wife and three kids, um, and sometimes generally older clients on the boat also, having the walkthrough windshield is really nice. I never, I always said that I would never have a full windshield boat, and then I guess I turned 35 and got soft. <laughs> right? It is super nice to have, but uh, really nice layout here. So we'll kind of start in the back of the boat if you want to. Obviously, the power plant here, we've got the 200 Pro XS V8 four-stroke, which this thing is an absolute beast. Uh, Casey and I were just talking about in the parking lot how I've got this thing pitched for good hole shot with a 19 uh, Tempest pitch prop on there. But this thing gets up out of the hole super good, super, super quiet, even wide open. We could have, you know, almost a whisper conversation going 54 miles an hour, which is kind of about the speed that I get. Because you guys know, I mean, everyone, when they're looking at a new boat or when you're selling a new boat or looking to buy a boat, Everyone's first question is what? How fast does it go? How yeah. fast does it go? So Yeah, and Brian, you mentioned something that I want to talk about. Number one, that Pro XS, just that little hot rod sound, just sounds, it's super sexy. Yeah, I mean, you can't really, it's something, I'll never get tired of hearing yeah. that when you fire it up. So having that V8, I mean, this thing is the torque daddy of engines. It's only a 200. That's what this boat is rated for too, yeah. uh, which is a 200. I think it would be a little bit underpowered at a 150. So Great. always max out, but. I've got a 9.9 Pro Kicker back here too for trolling. That thing fires up first go always. Uh, so her is just like a sewing machine. So that's nice to have. But back here, this is kind of the best part about these new Pro Vs. Um, it's just the big back deck layout. Whereas before you had a back deck, but it was an additional casting deck that flipped down, which is where you got your jump seats. Now they've integrated the whole thing. So on our back deck here, the jump seats just flip right up, which again, Super nice to have. I don't have to have additional seating back here, which is always kind of a pain um, when all I want in the cockpit is room. So if we do need additional seating, we can just flip those up or down here. The Lund Pro Vs. I mean, this is a tournament boat. You guys probably saw from the outside there, Pro V Tournament Series. So we do have the Tournament Series Pro Lung Plus Live Well system. So we've got uh, this first nozzle right here is high speed pickup. So when I'm running up on plane, if I have that nozzle open, it's bringing fresh water in. And then we've got our aerator right here. And then the red nozzle right there, that's kind of where the Prolong Plus system comes in. So when that's pushed in, that acts as the recir recirculation in the live well. But when you pull that out, it acts as a pump out. So you can pump that water out without actually having to pull the plug. So that's a really nice feature. All works really well. I do have a wash down system in the back of this boat too because with the aqua traction, it's gonna make it super easy for quick cleanups. A little bit of fish blood, uh, fish excrement, somebody spills their coffee, spray it right out. So before we kind of move towards the uh, console part of the boat, one thing you'll notice on the floor here, I do have the Lund Sport Top, and this is really nice because it fits right on the floor. And then when you do opt for the Sport Top option, it's got the hideaway kind of flip down deal right here. So. Um, Again, having a bimini in the boat is not always a bad thing. You don't have to act soft uh, for needing a bimini. It's just really nice to have in the boat. Throw up if you guys get caught in a rainstorm or just need some shade. So as we kind of do move forward, I don't want to forget about the side compartments in the gunnels here. So on the starboard side, just got a little compartment here. I can fit three or four Plano 3700s in there. Crankbaits, but it allows me a good place to keep my second uh, live scope system. So this is where the second pole on the stern goes. And I just took that right into the track system right there. And obviously I've got my second pole just laying right along the floor real nice. So that is the one thing being a tournament style boat, you're not gonna lose any amount of storage. There's always plenty of storage. So on this side, this is where somebody might keep uh, their longer trolling rods. There's spots in there for uh, four rods in there. I've just got my anchor light, 
bunch of planer boards, bump board in here. It'll kind of be used as a catch-all because generally, if I'm keeping rods in the boat, they're either out or in the center rod locker, which is what we're gonna get to. But again, just really nice to have storage in there, just kind of a longer catch-all, or if you wanna put your longer nine or 10 and a half foot trolling rods in there. So we're up on the dance floor right now. Uh, nice, big, obviously front area. So a lot of guys ask me too, when it comes to the 18, 19, 20, and 2175, what the size difference is. So pretty much going from an 1875 to a 1975, you gain one foot in the cockpit, but the bow area remains the same. And then when you get up to the 20 and 2175, that's when you gain an extra foot. But I find that the 1875, I can stand up here with two clients just, just fine. So I've got plenty of room, but in the front here, I run a 72 inch Tarova on this boat because we tend to fish in some pretty rough stuff sometimes, which I think we might be dealing with today. So it's nice to have that longer integrated shaft on the Tarova. Um, but other than that, I run a 16 inch Garmin up here, which is a dedicated live scope unit and a 106, a 10 inch unit just below that, which is talking to my two graphs at the helm. So I've got these mounted on the stowaway mount with the double stack, been with them forever. Love that mount. I know that Mid Kansas Marine installs a lot of those. And then we've got my second sea light pole. I've got it on the track system right here. And when we're not using it, I just lay it right there on the floor. So that's a really nice feature too, just to be able to get it up out of the way if we need to. But other than that, standard bow cargo nets. So again, just a catch all for ropes, buoys, extra rod holders and stuff. But now let's go over some of the uh, compartments up here too. All right, so up on the casting deck here, as far as compartments go, on the port side, you can see I've got some ice and drinks in there. That's your onboard cooler. So that's really nice to have. So you don't need an additional cooler in the boat. And then on the starboard side here, this is your front live well, which as you can see, I've plugged off and made that storage there. So I just keep all my bags of plastics and everything up here, readily accessible. So again, up here in the front on the port and starboard side, just additional storage. So again, just somewhere to put your life jackets, um, throwable, more ropes, whatever you want. But the one nice thing I will say that Lund has done, especially with these new Pro Vs, is integrate waterproof compartments throughout. So if we take a look right here, you guys are gonna see this aluminum channel right here, and then the uh, actual compartment liner up above it. That's gonna ensure that all your boxes stay dry because all the water that gets in is going to end up in that channel and then just drain right down into the bilge so that was an issue that i had in previous boats where they would say it's waterproof but it doesn't end up being super waterproof when you get caught in a gully washer so in front of the uh, starboard side on the console here this is where you access your fuse panel and uh, breakers and everything you can see i've got some of my graph power coming in right there um, but yeah, as far as accessibility goes for something on the fly, it's a lot easier than like we used to be getting up underneath the console. So this is all right at your fingertips right here. And then I've got my onboard charger outlet right on this side as well. And then another feature that Lund has integrated in these new models are on the go rod storage. So you can just shove your rods right up in there and then just hit the road. Okay, so as we kind of move forward here, midship, you guys will notice both up underneath uh, consoles here, we've got pull out drawers. These are probably the biggest drawers that I've ever had in any boat because this is where I keep pretty much all my tackle. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and can definitely fit one more Plano 3700 on both sides. So on this side, I have a lot of like my bass type stuff. And then on this side, stuck a little bit there, all my walleye stuff. So in this one, I've got a Plano deep box um, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 3700s in there. And I could probably fit one more in there if I really tried. I've got a little smaller box in there, a little skinnier one. But just to have all that at my fingertips on the go when we're fishing is really nice so I don't have to be digging in any other boxes. So I really do like those pull-out drawers. So let's talk about the consoles and the electronics that you're running and kind of talk about your layout and what size you have and how you have them set up, all that sort of stuff. So that is probably the one nicest upgrade that Lund has done for the new Pro Vs is redo the entire dash. So they designed this dash specifically to accommodate two big graphs because that's kind of the age that we're in now is that everybody's running big graphs. So I have two Garmin Echomap Ultra 126s rigged up right next to each other. So that's super nice. I always have side imaging running on one and then mapping down or uh, traditional sonar on the other. Big but, enough that you can run gimbal brackets on both right from the factory. Yeah, that's another good thing too. I've always over the years just dealt with really unreliable RAM mounts. Um, probably should have gotten like a nice Cisco mount over time. But 
with the specific dash that I had, or dash is, I should say, that I had, it just made it really tough to mount, you know, accessory brackets to the graphs. But again, just like Casey said on these, you can mount the gimbal direct to the dash uh, with four bolts instead of having to have a mount on those. So other than that, I just run the standard gauges because I do have Mercury Vessel View on my phone so I can monitor the engine hours or if it's throwing any codes. That was really obviously really good for break-in. So you can get, um, you know, your uh, hour meter on the upgraded dash portion. But like I said, I just have standard gauges. But Rockwood Fosgate stereo, we've got two six-inch kickers up there, two, uh, two four-inchers up there in this stereo rock. So that's nice to have. But over on this side, just got a smaller glove box here. Uh, keep a couple pairs of shades or something or my trolling motor remote. Nice little catch-all platform right here. And then same thing on the passenger side, the, mo the world's most giant glove box. So you can see I've wasted no time loading it up with uh, everything that I could possibly ever lose in that. So other than that, um, I mean, we'll kind of swing around here so maybe you guys can see all LED uh, switch panel right here. So we've got all your live well bilge pump, uh, LEDs, horn, everything down there. Um, up here, we've got USB and USB-C outlets right there and then a 12 volt outlet down there cup holder little catch-all area and then obviously the recessed controls are super nice so i can spin a full 360 in my chair without accidentally uh kicking my kicker out of gear so phone holder with the charger like that. yeah super also nice to point out he has the on his track system he has the um, led strip lights all the way along the boat it's a sweet feature yep yeah we'll insert a clip of what those strip lights look like at night but they are super bright i only use those lights when i need them uh, i do not fish really at night so i don't want to have those on especially this time of year with the bugs but yeah we do have a wireless phone charger right here which is really nice to have i mean it's not the fastest charger in the world but it is super nice to have that just to at least put your phone somewhere so now we will kind of move towards the front of the boat that. We do have the rod box loaded down. This is a 15 rod box, and I think that it holds up to eight foot rods. So down beneath there, we've got the battery charger. I run a four bank charger for all the lithiums in my boat because this boat is entirely powered by lithium. And I will say too that the uh, integrated strip lighting in the boat also transfers through to the rod box. So you've got lights in there, but obviously really, really nice to have that center rod box and I can fit pretty much every rod that I'm gonna use on a day-to-day -day basis in it. So. Pretty much just like any boat, um, kind of set up like this. My two deep cycles are down there, my two lithium deep cycles that I run to 125 amp hour. And then right here in this compartment, this is actually where I store my house battery. So I do run a 100 amp hour lithium battery to power all my uh, graphs and all my live scopes in the boat. So that's what that compartment there is for. All right, so let's talk about the floor here because that's definitely one of the first things that people recognize on the boat is the aqua traction. But before we talk about that, let's talk about what Lund has done to the entire boat as far as the integrity of the flooring. So there's not any wood in these boats anymore. We've got a composite transom and everything in here. There's no marine grade plywood, so you'll never have to worry about wood rot or anything like that. But in this boat, I went with the vinyl floor throughout except for the back deck just because we knew we were going to be putting the aqua traction on. So you guys can see I've got the topography pattern, got my logo in the floor, Mid-Kansas Marine over on the starboard gunnel, and then the measuring tape over on the port side gunnel. Um, if you can dream it, Aqua Traction can do it. So for me, again, having people in and out of my boat every day, foot traffic, do not want to be replacing carpet. I'm not a huge fan of vinyl because it gets really hot, really slick. And those are two things that Aqua Traction does not have that issue with. So. I am very much enjoying uh, having aqua traction in my second boat now through Mid Kansas Marine, and I think it turned out freaking awesome. Looks great. <laughs> I love the topography. I just, it looks slick. 